I always get the first wave. Pretty much, I it brought me to tears, like the wave was so good. That's the biggest drop I've ever taken in my life. And so right there, I told myself I needed to just relax and stay calm, that I'm stronger than this. Take us through from seeing that thing, uh, and let's let 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 Barry take us through to dropping you off onto the wave, and then Connor, you take take over, <laughs> actually freaking surfing that thing. <laughs> And then uh, Dylan can give us his view from watching it on the on the on the land after that, going fucking please make this thing, please make this thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like sitting out there, um, you know, we'd been out a while. We were kind of like, okay, it's we've we've had a couple of good ones, but now it's time to really drop anchor and wait for a proper one. And um, it it was like. There's two types of sets out there. There's west sets and, and like ones with a bit more north in them. I, I call them north sets, but technically they can't actually come from the north. But you know what I mean? They're kind of focused more on the end ball. And they're the ones. Like if you're looking to get big barrels, they're the ones. And um, I was waiting. And then the next thing we – you know, like you, you're drifting over these things that are literally like liquid mountains the whole day. So like my sense of uh, scale or proportion was totally blown out. Like I didn't really know what I was looking at anymore after a while. Like were they 30 foot, were they 60 foot? Like it was really hard to know. And I was kind of like going through that in my head going, wow, I wonder how the hell I'm doing this even. And then this thing just broke like, uh, really, I, if I had to drive from where we were sitting at the back of the ledge where I was about to drive him in from, if I had to drive to where that thing broke, it would have been about a five to ten minute jet ski drive. No, that's how far out to no see. No way. It di it didn't really like Just break cap. break, but like it, it it capped, but with intent. You know, like I, I remember seeing it and going like. Jesus, that's the kind of stuff that that's the kind of wave that it'd sink a ship. That's what went through my head. And I was like, okay, just don't say anything. Like, like, <laughs> I, I was like sitting there, like holding on the handlebars, going, like, just you, there's like a fine line when you're driving as I'm sure you know, where you're like, Oh my God, here it comes. This is a one, you know, or you just like play it cool and don't get bucko on the back's heart rate through the roof. And I was like, okay, play this one cool, man. Like this is the biggest lump of water you've seen your whole life. And it's, it's coming right for you. And do not screw this up. Like you, you got to make sure it's a, that like if you're going to put him into the second wave of the set, you got to make sure the second wave's the biggest. B, like, it would really be bad if you, like, drop him into a somewhat, like, 30-footer and then there's, like, a giant one behind it that rolls over the top of him. So I was kind of just, like, I need another look at this thing. I need, like, a proper vantage point to see is it number two or number three or number four? What the hell's going on here? And I knew, like... There's no ways he would have seen it. He was like in the water behind me, like just his head sticking out. Uh, and I was like, there's no ways Connor's seen what I seen, that thing breaking out there. And then like 10 seconds later, after I just told myself, play cool, I hear him go, fuck. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. He's definitely seen it. And I just looked around. <laughs> I looked around at him. I was like, are you ready? And he was like, yeah, I'm ready. And because it happened so far out, we just sat and waited and waited. I don't know, bro. It was maybe like over a minute. And I, I, the whole time, all I wanted to say to him was like, you're going to do this, bro. You're going to be okay. But I was just like, don't say anything. Just he's like in his weird little place in his head that he needs to crawl away into to feel good in a situation like this and just don't talk to him. And like, 
I turned around and like I turned around and looked at him at one stage and he just had his eyes closed <laughs> and he had like the the handle in his hands and his eyes were closed and he was just going <sighs> like just breathing and I was like oh my god this is so so hectic see they're they're, they're, the, they're the moments you want to remember like because you because no one no yeah. one sees that no, no one like no one feels that you guys are going to have that connection of like that moment oh, forever and no one can no one can even comprehend i mean people have been in that position for sure but that's such a cool connection that you guys will be drinking pints for the rest of your life going do you remember that swell when you were just like <laughs> but um how many ways were in that yeah. set then um i think there may have may have been three and old biggie was number two do, do, do is number two generally do you like one to hit the reef and then sort of draw the water off to is yeah. set, set number two usually the best way out there yeah you want the first one especially on a giant day you want the first one to break so you can pinpoint where you got where you're driving to you know and i was like cool let this let let the little 30 footer go <laughs> and it went under us and it kind of like I could see by the pistons like firing out the back. It was just like eating itself like over the reef. And I'm normally the guy who gambles, you know, out there if I'm driving, I'm I'm often like to the guys on the rope, like, do you want to gamble on this one? Like, will we gamble? There's a bigger one behind or do you want to go on this? And I 90% of the time I gamble and, and think the neck, the one behind the one I'm looking at is going to be the one that it's the bigger one. But this thing was so obviously the one yeah. that it was just like, let's go, dude. And Can you imagine flying over that one and then not being one behind it? Oh, that was oh. like my, that was, that was my fear, bro. And I was just like, I don't care what's behind this thing. Like this is big enough. Yeah. And it was not like, and more importantly, it was North. And I was like, oh, oh <laughs> you're on, Connor. It's time to put your money where your mouth is, boy. Yeah. <laughs> and I, That's classic. I, I was like, cool, let, let's leave early. And we were kind of like pointing out to sea, like, you know, like going into the wind like this. And I was like, cool. I got him up early, turned him around. And... The swells at when they're that like peak period, they move so quick. Probably like a lot like jaws, I reckon, like where you got to leave a bit earlier than even what your mind's thinking. And I was like, cool, I'm leaving early on this thing. I, like I'll slow down if I have to to place him on the top third rather than yeah. play catch up from the get go. And yeah, um, whip, whipping it in so fast that he's on his tippy toes, like sketching yeah, out. Uh, you didn't want that. Yeah. And uh, I left early, placed him up on like the top third, like I'd been taught, and just drove him wave speed all the way in, which was pretty pinning it, like yeah. definitely quicker than a normal day. And um, we were like approaching where the first one had landed, and I was like, okay, Rad, this is it, this is it. And then I just saw that really what was going on was I placed him on like let's i don't know size is all relative here but like let's say i placed him on like a 40 footer a third a third on the top third of it but there was like a 20 foot low hill in front of it and the 40 footer was riding up the 20 footer to become a giant double up and i i'd only really like twigged in my mind on the way in that i, I was like oh my god God, this thing's a giant double up. And like at that time, I was like, I got to look back. I look back and it was this mad moment where like I looked him straight in the eyes and like there was no nod, there was no nothing, nothing. It was just like, bro, I'm going to sling you over this 20 footer. And he just like, he didn't nod, he didn't like, nothing he just like squished his feet into the straps a little bit and i was like okay this is it and i gassed it as fast as i could like up the back of the 20 footer and he like came right to the bottom of the 40 footer and then 
when I got onto the top of the 20 footer, I just banked left like and fueled it like just to put like a pendulum on the rope. And yeah, like the last I saw of him was him letting go at the top of the 20 footer with like a 40 footer right on its ass, like right there. And I peeled, it was crazy, dude. Like I peeled off the 20 footer, which felt like, like flat water on a day like that. It was like really like just a lump and I peeled off it and then went up the 40 footer. And when I got, and I was kind of going up and going, you better make it over this thing. I, I knew I was, I knew I was going to make it like up and over safe, but I wanted to get that parting shot, you know, and I wanted to get to the top quick so I could like, look know I was safe so I could look. And I got up and like, it was feathering and I, I like hit it kind of banked off the feather and knew I was over. And I looked down and bro, what I saw, I told him after like, what I saw made me feel sick. Yeah. Like it actually like, I, like it made me feel ill. Like yeah, he because, was just. Because you're like, if he falls right now, like fuck, he's dead. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a yeah. horrible feeling. Yeah. I mean, the only word that comes to mind with what I saw is abyss. Yeah. Like he was going down into the underworld. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it was hectic. Dude. Yeah, that's awesome. That's such a cool story. That, that's such a great mental story. And now uh, let's start, Connor, with uh, I love that analogy that, uh, that Barry has of just seeing you like on the rope, sort of just meditating to yourself, I imagining just, just like big breaths, stay calm. I've got this, basically. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining that's what's going through your mind. But, ta- but take us through it, please. <laughs> Um, yeah, like Barry said, and like I said earlier, he was trying to stay calm and I, I kind of sensed that from him almost cause he was, he was unusually quiet, you know, <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's usually one, like if there's nothing happening, we, we have a good chat and then, um, yeah, it was, it, it went, it fell silent and I just looked out the horizon and seen this fucking crazy wave just cap <laughs> where I've never seen anything cap before it was uh it was time to go so yeah like barry said i was just just closed my eyes started breathing and imagining dropping down the face of a a wave like that and i just kind of wanted to get oxygen into my blood and kind of get myself and my body ready for what was to come just in case you know i fell in a bad spot or something like that um and yeah like barry said he got me up early and i was going Mac 10 I've never been going that fast before I mean I I surfed Nazare on a on a pretty big day like a 60 foot plus day maybe I don't know so, so hard at that place you don't know how big it is but um yeah it was that day that you see Russell Burke your keep we went over together and he faded under the peak in front of the cliff and gets ah so I uh, and that the power and the speed that the swell was moving that day compared compared to Mullet Moore was incomparable comparison. It was mental. Like Mullet Moore, just the energy behind that wave was next level. And like Barry was in like a pendulum and I used the rope the speed, make sure it was really tense and just drop it right when I thought it was time. I just remember like, huge double up and the thing was crazy man it felt like it was just bombing it down a skateboard but super <laughs> super smooth like my rail was in and it felt amazing it was the best feeling i've ever had in um uh, this, this bump of swell like, the thing i compared it to in my head like i this not waved it is that I was going so fast riding this big open water lump of swell that came from so far away. And it just felt like this moment that I saw years ago in a big wave movie of Brad Gerlach shot from a helicopter. And he's just riding this swell into the boat. Just see it like pulls back out. And that's what it felt like. It was, um, it was so surreal. The wave felt the reef and it stood up even further and taller 
I just like felt myself accelerate and just set a line and on bottom turned and had everything fully on rail. And I was literally like, yeah, it's ingrained in my mind forever. Just that feeling of like the whole energy of the ocean behind it with my rail <laughs> being the one saving grace. Like it was so crazy just having this tiny bit of fiberglass and foam that between me skipping out or me like pulling it the, the wave of my life and you were saying you had a you had a board you had a set of future fins everything felt amazing and as you're slicing and dicing down this I, you know i don't even want to call it a size it seems um it seems stupid to call it a size because it's just fucking massive but um now a, a question i wanted to ask halfway through that now i know mullet more it's you know at a certain size it's all about the barrel you know you, you want to be getting barreled like is now are you at all thinking about how deep you are should i be deeper in this moment or are you just like you've set your line that line is what it is if i get barreled i get barreled if i don't it, it doesn't matter like what is that creeping into your mind at all or I, i'd like to get that part of like what you were thinking in that moment um, totally, you know, my my dream as a kid is always just to get the biggest barrels I could and that's just translated into more the more and more I push myself and big wave surfing and at Mulligmore, you know, it's the place I love most in the world and for sure, man, like the day that the reason I was out there was to get the biggest barrel I could. It wasn't to get the biggest wave. You know, like if I wanted the biggest wave, I wanted would have went to Nazare or would have surfed it when it was onshore or shoulder hopped. Like, I don't really care about that. Um, yeah, the, is like I said earlier. You know, you can see when the wave hits the reef on the end ball, like Barry said, those those north sets as he describes them, they um, they feel the reef out in such a way that the boils start to bubble up on the inside and that kind of gives you a gauge of what the barrel is actually going to do and where it's going to break. And you kind of want to position yourself in, in such a place that you're sort of underneath and a little bit behind those, I guess. And um, yeah, that's kind of what I, I got a read of coming down the face on that thing as I bottom turned and checked just to slow myself down a little bit on that wave. And the thing just, yeah, I, I couldn't believe how smooth it was. It was uh it was big and beautiful and green and um yeah I, I just yeah i just stood there really it was amazing i kind of had all the time in the world to stand up and just appreciate the whole wave and how beautiful it was and i felt like that was kind of the best moment i've ever had in surfing was just standing there <laughs> um it, it felt like a minute or two but um it was only obviously but yeah i just got to I got to take everything in, which is quite rare, you know, usually, like, I don't really remember many of the other waves or like Barry said, all the swells kind of jumble into one and as, as do the waves, you know, you kind of forget about them. But this one, I just got to stand there and fully get all in and that felt really special. Did you, when you kicked out or not kicked out, when you got, let's talk about, I look at the wave as, as three parts. You know, you see that part where you're dropping in, it's starting to do its thing. It's starting to feel the reef, and and this is what trips because you can't see I, I, the footage and everything from the channel is so. Um, yeah, it's back to front, right? The big, the barrel's so big that I don't even know if at the start. Like it looks like you're not in the barrel, but maybe you were. Like so, I, you know, as you're coming down, when it starts to feel it, then it looks like you sort of come out of it, and then that thing grows again and then it chandeliers and you see all the white water then you disappear then you come out of that section again and then you hit the end and then the thing just clamps you right right at the end um like what did you were you were you aware of where you were like the whole time or is it just sort of like looking at the the channel and, and where you've got to try and get to because like did it feel like you were in the barrel the whole time like what for me, I can't tell. It's just so big and so round that, like, you could have been. Or I, I don't know. It's trippy. <laughs> <laughs> um, for for me, I, I was just, yeah, like, at the start when I was just standing there, I could just see this thing throw over. Mm. And, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to know, really. It was just so trippy. So fast. I, 
Yeah, and like, fuck, it, it just felt insane. And then I remember seeing the, the lip sort of come down a little bit, and I, I kind of readjusted. Like, I knew exactly where I was on the wave and what was happening. Um, I was quite aware and in the moment. And I just kind of set a line and hope for the best. And um, yeah, like you said, that thing behind me, I was in complete disbelief and couldn't see anything <laughs> at all. And I just felt it even through the fucking, I probably had, I would say about 10 mil of rubber on me between the, the rubber vest and the, the pole vest and the six mil wetsuit. Um, so I even felt the, the force wow. through that. And um, the thing, the thing picked me up when I was just levitating and it just placed me back down so gently. Like it felt like I fully lifted off the wave it was so powerful and then my rail sort of engaged again and i i just like was able to see into the channel and seeing this boil in front of me and kind of skipped over it and i was like holy shit i made yeah. this thing <laughs> and then out of nowhere this like 20 tons of fucking lift just <laughs> smacks me in the side and just absolutely nails yeah. me <laughs> and that's the thing about mullock Moore, you know that is a classic example you you think you're all safe and in the clear and Mullagmore has a different idea like, for that's you. So, like, that's so funny, right? Because I was telling a friend the other day, they're like, oh, how, you know, he made that wave and he just got clipped at the end, you know, and I'm like, just let's put this in perspective. Like, what you saw was an 80-foot face wave at takeoff and at the end you just see, like, because and, and the camera angle's pulled in, right, so it doesn't look as big, but... He just got slammed heavily at the end there because it looks like on the scheme of things at the end when you get clipped, it looks small. So take us through what, what it was like, how big that end section was and what it felt like to get just clamped at the end. Yeah, so um, I mean, Barry will probably tell you as well, like where I came out of that mist on a normal day, that probably, or a normal sized wave, that probably would have been me in the channel. That thing was so know, big. Man. It almost broke mm. off the end of the reef. It wanted to go the whole way to Bandor and that thing. I think I probably could have highlined it back to my eyes. <laughs> but um yeah, man, I, I don't know, man, it was crazy. Like I didn't expect to get hit at all. I wasn't prepared. Um that was a crazy thing. Like I thought I'd made it because I was in that zone and um like the safe zone sort of. But yeah, it, like I said, Mullock Moore has a different idea for you and that thing just absolutely nailed me sent me super deep and i got super rattled i was sore for days it, it felt like mm. i got hit by a truck fully i mean people say that sometimes and they get heavy white bites but this really felt like someone fucking ran over me <laughs> and then that thing just blew my strap open um off my board like yeah, well, that's what those 20 second plus intervals will do. It, it, it's a big difference between 16 to 17 to when you get into those 20s. It's a whole nother realm. 